This is George from High Tech Legion. While most of the attention uh, in cooling goes towards CLCs and flagship type coolers, there's an ever growing community of people building micro PCs, mini PCs, uh, PCs that'll sit on or fit on the back of a TV and mount up there. And of course, they're going to need cooling as well. Especially uh, people are trying to put Core i5s, Core i7s into them. So you're going to need some cooling and you're going to have some serious space limitations. Today, we're going to take a look at a piece from Thermolab. The, ITX30, which is the shortest cooler we've ever looked at here at High Tech Legion, and claims a 100 watt TDP for Core i5, Core i7 type coolers. Getting our first look at the ITX30, obviously the box, not much to look at. Plain, plain cardboard box, as you see here, very little on it. Um, just your application, uh, socket application, LGA 1150-55-56, and your dimensions of 100 by 94 by 30, 30 millimeters in height. I mean, this thing is absolutely tiny, shortest thing we've ever looked at here at High Tech Legion. Um, moving over, all of your specs are right on the sticker right here. Weight 300 grams, heatsink material, pure copper. That's going to play a big part in what we're looking at today. Fan, 4-pin PWM, 80 by 80, 10 millimeter thick fan. So very, very slim fan. 1400 to 2500 RPM maxes out at 27 dB. Uh, now, typically with slim fans, what we've seen in the past is they do make a lot of noise. This one's only rated at 27 dB, so I feel pretty sure that it's going to be pretty quiet. Now, getting a look at the ITX30 itself. As you see, it is absolutely tiny. Taking a look, I mean... The uh, Intel stock cooler runs about 54 millimeters. This is only 30, so it's only about half the size. Really, really nicely built. As you see here, pure copper throughout everything. Uh, the contact block, as you see here, all of your heat sink fins are copper, as well as two six millimeter heat pipes, which as you can see, run through the block entirely, come back out and through the fins themselves. All copper fins, as we say. Mounting bracket, not copper, obviously. Um, doesn't need to be copper. Now, reason for the copper, copper is the best material for heat dissipation. That's a big uh, thing here because you, when you are working with something this small, you want the maximum amount of dissipation available uh, to be used. So what that translates to is, since you're using a better material for dissipation, you can get the same type of dissipation in a smaller form. So what you're getting is, uh, if you were using aluminum, which is what we typically see, it would have to be much larger to replicate the amount of dissipation that the ITX30 has. So that plays a huge part. Now, as you take a look around it, it's very, very nicely put together. As I say, um, all the solder joints, everything lines up very, very well. Now, the uh, fan, which does not have to come off at any point for the installation, as you'll see, very, very simple installation, does come pre-mounted and can be taken off if you like with the fan clips that you see here. And let's give a tug. But like I say, there's really no reason to ever have to take off the fan, of course, unless you're replacing it or you've got a bad fan, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll just pop it off here and you get a look through the stack itself and you can see very clearly those heat pipes running through as you see here and very nice design little inlet for the fan itself which is going to help with the height also and as you see just beautifully soldered really really nice looking little heat sink that we've got here fan itself very simple fan as we say 80 by 80 by 10 15 or uh, 1400 to 2400 uh, 2500 rpm at a max of 27 db very very slim as you see uh the blades themselves do have a curve to them and are cupped so gonna get a little bit less turbulence there and a little bit more airflow so really nice looking design the itx30 uses a very very simple mounting mechanism so with that in mind, the accessory kit is very, very smart. The entire thing consists of four screws and four washers. That is the entire accessory kit. There is, of course, an instruction manual included. Very, very simple. Uh, we'll go through the installation, but as you can see, washers go on the four screws, plugs in, and four screws go in from the back right into the retention brackets that are already on here. Other thing to keep in mind, thermal interface material does come pre-applied, as you see here, so there's no need for a tube of it. 
It's pre-applied, so you've got one application there. If you are going to be taking it off, putting it back on, of course, you'll have to get more thermal interface material. But it is pre-applied, so you do have a one-time installation right there. The Thermolab ITX30 and LP53 share the same mounting system, so we're going to take a look at both today. Um, now first, starting with the ITX30, as you see here, we've taken off the thermal interface material and we're going to be using some Noctua NTH1 for consistency in our testing. That's already been applied to the CPU. So as you see uh, on the ITX30 and as well on the LP53, really when you've got the uh, thermal interface material the pre-applied Tim off, uh, it's got a really nice polish to the block itself. Now, very, very simple. First step, you're gonna need to put your washers onto your screws, as you see here, uh, flat side of the washer facing the head of the screw. Next, simply put the cooler into position. Very, very important that most people don't know. Um, you want your U's either facing down or to the side. You never want the U facing up with the end of the heat pipe facing down. That will cause problems as far as heating. So side to side, fine. Facing up with the tips of the heat pipes, facing up with the U at the bottom, fine, but never upside down. So we're gonna put it into place. And simply put the four screws in from the rear. Give you a look at what's going on on the back of the motherboard as you see the four screws go in and as you can see when you're threading it's actually very easy to see the threading uh through the hole in the motherboard and then just get your screw right into place uh it's not something you really need to fidget around with a whole lot especially once the first screws started i mean the four will go right in uh what you want to do after you've got them hand tight is then tighten up in obviously x pattern until these stop you don't want to over tighten you just want it to snug till it stops. And you're all set. Like I say, no backplate, so you've got no motherboard component interference whatsoever back here. Uh, so perfect for ITX motherboards. And of course, final step, the installation. Just plug your fan into your CPU four pin header. and you're ready to go. Obviously you can tuck your wiring as needed and clean it up. But as you can see on the ITX30, very, very low profile on the installation. Um, actually lower than the height of the uh, RAM. And as you can see, there are no heat sinks on this RAM. So very, very tiny. Taking a look at the benchmarks on the G840 Pentium, which uh, actually has a heat uh, footprint very similar to most Core i3s, the ITX30 held up very, very well with temperatures never topping 43 degrees, as you see here. Also very, very quiet, very well um, behaved as far as any type of noise. Now, with that said, since we see Thermolab's claim of uh, being able to cool a TDP of 100 watts, I moved it over to a 4770K, and this is where things got really impressive. Uh, you have to keep in mind, this is a 30 millimeter tall cooler. And it's on a 4770K, which probably has the highest heat, foot, uh, heat footprint of any of the CPUs out there right now, except, of course, the Extreme Series, but in the Haswell family, uh, Ivy Bridge family. So uh, aside from the Extremes, you're definitely looking at the hottest running CPU out there. And it did really, really well. Uh, temperatures never topped 74 degrees. Uh, stayed right on par with the Noctua. It was actually a little bit quieter than the Noctua at NHL9i. The Fantex could not even complete the test uh, without going over 80 degrees. So significantly better there. So really just astounding uh, performance from the Thermolab ITX30. All right, so when we put all the parts together, first off, We've got the ITX30, very, very tiny piece, like I say, only 30 millimeters in height, so it's going to fit just a bit anywhere. If you're doing a small form factor case with very limited room, and a lot of the cases have trade-offs like, uh, well, you can have a hard drive or you can uh, go up to 60 millimeters in height on your CPU core. So you're not going to lose anything, uh, you know, in terms of other components as a result of cooling. Now, the performance itself uh, really was phenomenal, uh, really kept up with the Noctua NHL9i without a problem. Uh, the performance on the uh, 
Pentium was fantastic. Now, typically I would never think to throw uh, a cooler of this size on a 4770K. Reason I did it, the um, first off, you've got Thermolab claims that it'll cool up to 100 watt TDP. Second off, it did so well on the Pentium that I wanted to see what it would do on the 4770, and it did very, very well, as you saw. Uh, there would be no problem cooling, you know, something as hot as this Haswell, which is, you know, the hottest running chip on the market right now with this in a small form factor case, provided you have adequate ventilation in the case. That is gonna play a big part. So now, I'm gonna give it a High Tech Legion Editor's Choice Award, obviously. I mean, the installation was phenomenally simple. Performance was great, great footprint, uh, very, very nicely constructed. Also, it was very quiet throughout all our testing, even at full speed. Uh, it didn't have that whirring buzzy type sound that you typically get with a slim uh, fan. It actually remained very, very quiet. It wasn't completely inaudible um, from inside the case, but it was close uh, when it, at top speed. During normal usage, you couldn't hear it whatsoever. So that's that. Some people might gawk a little bit at the price, which is $49.95 right now MSRP. However, you have to keep in mind, the Noct was $47.95. You know, performance is right on par there. So you're getting a fair deal there. However, with the ITX 30, it's a little bit shorter. And also, um, that $49.95 is justifiable. I mean, it's all solid copper. Copper is a much more expensive material, raw material, than aluminum. So it's going to be justified that it is going to be an expensive piece. It's not for everybody, but for anybody doing a really small form factor case who needs good cooling, it's going to be a godsend. So once again, the, the uh, Thermolab ITX30 takes home a High Tech Legion Editor's Choice Award.